It is my hope and prayer that you are well wherever you are. In this session, we are going to talk about tax compliance by churches. Let me ask you this question. Is your church tax compliant? I know you may not have this information, and especially if you are not a member of the church management or you own a church. But hear me out. If you are a member of a church, it is very important for you to know whether your church is tax compliant or not. And this is the reason. In case the church is found not to be tax compliant by the tax commissioner, there will be penalties, fines, interest, and many other charges. The church we know does not have its own money, and most churches rely on contributions from members. You are going to be called upon to contribute for those tax penalties, tax fines, tax interest. And therefore, as a member of a church, it is important for you to take a bit of time and understand how the institution is operated. Remember that churches are public organizations. A church is not a personal property that belongs to the pastor and his family. No, a church is a public enterprise belonging to the members. In case your church is not tax compliant, you're not alone. We are told the story of Zacchaeus, who was a tax collector, and he climbed on top of a tree so that he can listen to what Jesus was saying. But Jesus summoned Zacchaeus to come down and be among the people. I can only imagine that most of those people were not tax compliant. And because Zacchaeus had been on their tolls asking them to comply with taxes, he was not a friend of the majority. And that is why he cried on top of the tree. But Jesus showed a very good example that even though you are not complying with taxes, the tax people are not your enemies. The tax commissioner is not your enemy. Tax compliance levels range from 0% all the way to 100%. There are very few companies or taxpayers whose tax compliance levels are 100%. I have worked for many years in the tax industry, but I've never come across anyone whose tax compliance levels are 100%. Majority of taxpayers, their tax compliance levels are below 50%. However, this is not a reason for you not to comply. Every day, you should work towards improving your tax compliance levels. In this session, we are going to discuss about what the church can do so that it can improve its tax compliance levels. These are some of the things that the church should already have done. Specifically, we are going to discuss seven steps. Number seven is going to supply Z. So what are the steps that the church should already have taken to improve tax compliance? Step number one is to have proper records and documents. And these are tax records and tax documents. And the church should have this in place so that any time that the tax commissioner may require to have the tax documents and records, the church will not inform the tax commissioner that they do not have the tax records and documents. The church should actually ask the tax commissioner when do you require the tax records and documents? Every time when we are talking about tax records and documents, there are three keywords that are very important. And many people who have not been keen on these three keywords have fallen into trouble with the tax commissioner. The first one is keep. Taxpayers are required to keep tax records and documents. Remember, churches are taxpayers because they have a PIN number. That is a personal identification number. And in case your church does not have one, it is important for you to get one from the tax commissioner. So the first requirement is that the church should keep the tax records and documents. And what do you mean by keep? Keeping means complete. For example, if your invoice or your receipt is from number one, two, three, four, or the way to 100, that receipt book should be serially numbered. You have number one, number two, number three, 
or the rate 100. And when you are using the receipt book, you should follow that order. And in case you skip any receipt, the original should remain in the book. You cannot use number one, number two, and number four, and skip number three. In case you skip number three, the original plus the duplicates should be present. When you look at the bank reconciliations, they should be reconciled up to date. When you look at the cash books, the ledgers, and all other books of accounts, which are basically the same as tax records and tax documents, all of them should be kept. They should be up to date. The second term that you have to be careful about is maintaining tax records and documents. And by maintaining, we mean the tax records and documents must be in good order. They should not be torn. They should not be dirty. They should be maintained. They should be taken care of. The third term that you should be careful about is retaining tax records and tax documents. Currently, the tax law requires that every taxpayer retain tax records and tax documents for a period of five years. But I always advise taxpayers to retain the tax records and documents for a longer time. This is because tax assessments, tax audits, and any resolution of a tax dispute are going to rely on your tax records and tax documents. And therefore, you may find yourself in a very dangerous situation where the commissioner has assessed you, but you don't have tax records or tax documents. And because you don't have the evidence, you are going to be required to pay the money. Irrespective of what your arguments are, you need evidence. And therefore, tax records and documents are very important when we are talking about tax. In actual fact, when you talk about the heart of tax, it is the tax records and the tax documents. That is the heart of tax because everything is from those tax documents and tax records. The good, the bad, the ugly, the beautiful about tax is from tax records and tax documents. What you need to do, as far as tax records and documents are concerned, you need to establish an accounting system to record payments, contributions, expenses, and income. In most cases, you don't need a software. You only need to understand your system. The softwares that we have today, it is somebody's manual accounting system that was transformed into a software. Have a system that you understand and a system that you can explain to anyone who is asking you about tax records and tax documents. The next thing that you need to do is you need to keep receipts of everything that you purchase. Remember, when you're talking about tax, we are talking about your sales and your purchases. I've seen very many people leaving out receipts. Go to the parking lots. You'll find a lot of receipts that are left there. People actually do not pick their receipts. And if there is anything I can advise you as far as tax is concerned, make sure that you pick every single receipt for everything that you procure. Even those people who are not willing to give you a receipt, ask for the receipt. It is very important. Number three, regularly reconcile your accounts. We understand that the pastor is busy and the church management is busy, but make sure that you reconcile your accounts. Whatever money you are receiving should be reconciled with the money that has been spent and the money that still remains in the church accounts. This is very important because in case you cannot account for how you spent the money, you are going to pay tax. Number four is to keep track of all financial activities. It is important for the church to keep track of its activities. And these are activities that are related to the money received by the church and the money that is paid out by the church. Many churches complain that they don't have money to hire qualified people. But sometimes a church does not even need the money 
to hire qualified people. There are very many members, there are very many church members who are qualified and they can give their time to help the church set up some of these systems. If you do not know the tax records and documents to have in place, don't worry. There are three sources. Number one, you can ask members of your church who know these things to explain to you. Number two, you can visit the tax commissioner and you're going to be told the tax records and documents that you need to maintain. Number three, we are going to put up a video on the specific tax records and documents that you are supposed to have. The other reason that you should have proper tax records and documents is that when the tax commissioner requires you to avail the tax records and documents, you are supposed to do that immediately. And in case you don't do that, you are going to be penalized. There is a penalty for failure to produce the tax records and documents. Step number two is to separate church and personal finances. We know that many churches are operated by pastors and his all has spouse, and there is basically no separation of church money and the pastor's money. This is a problem especially with the small churches. For whatever reason or reasons, most pastors forget that there is a very big difference between the pastor and the church. The church was started by an individual. The church is a public organization. It is not a personal entity. The church is not owned by the pastor. No, it is not. Even when you look at the documents for registration, there is no church that is registered as a private entity of one individual person. It is very important for pastors to learn to separate church money and their personal money. Because if they don't do that, then the tax commissioner will treat the money received in pastor's bank accounts as personal money and the pastor is going to pay tax on that money. And this is irrespective of what the money was for. Instead of the pastor having to answer very many questions from the tax commissioner, the best thing to do is to separate the money. Once you do that, it is going to simplify your reporting and it is also going to ensure that there is transparency. Step number three is to understand your tax obligations. For whatever reason or reasons, many churches believe that they are tax exempt. But are churches really exempt? We know there is some money that is received by the church and it is exempt. And this is money that is received for core church business. And we all know that the core church business is religious matters. Any money that is not received for core church business, that is taxable. For example, in case the church has a restaurant, the money that is paid in the restaurant is subject to value added tax. That is, in cases where the restaurant has qualified to be registered for value added tax. It is important for you and other church members or leaders to be aware of the specific tax obligations as far as the church is concerned. There are very many tax obligations because the church is not treated as a separate entity as far as taxation is concerned. In the eyes of taxation, all taxpayers are equal. What are some of the obligations? Number one is tax registration. If the church is engaged in any activities that are subject to a certain tax type, the church must register. And of course, we know the first activity is to operate as a registered organization. And for that, the church is required to get the pin. In cases where the church also engages in other activities, for example, business activities, the church is required to register for the taxes that are applicable. And those are taxes like value added tax, domestic excess duty, and others. The second obligation is 
to deduct tax on the payments of all employees. That is an obligation. If the church has any employee, whether it is the pastor, his wife, or her husband, or any other person working for the church, the money that they get, the church has an obligation to deduct pay as you want. And this is irrespective of whether the payment is a salary, a benefit, or an allowance. All of them are subject to tax. The third obligation is for the church to pay tax on income from all activities that are not religious. For example, if the church is in the business of farming, there is income tax that the church is expected to pay. If the church is also in the business of renting space, there is income tax that the church is expected to pay plus any other tax. The fourth obligation is to file collect tax returns and make sure the returns are filed on time. In case the church does not do this, there is going to be a fine, there is going to be penalties, there are going to be interest and many other things. It is therefore important for the church to ensure that a collect tax return is filed and also filed on time. Obligation number five is to ensure that the church limits the collect amount of tax and also to limit the money on time. As far as taxes are concerned, the church should be a good example. The church should be without blemish. It should be like Caesar's wife. Whatever amount of tax the church is expected to pay, that should be paid. And it should not only be paid, it should be paid on time. In the recent times, many churches have complained that the government is punishing them. That is not the case. We all know that paying tax is very biblical. Number six is to comply with country laws and especially those laws that also affect tax compliance. When the church does that, it is going to help the church avoid fines, penalties, interest, prosecution, and possibly jail time. When we talk about jail time, it does not matter whether it is church, an individual taxpayer, or an individual taxpayer. The people responsible may find themselves in jail. The tax law is clear. The responsibility for taxes in any organization falls on the top management and also the directors. They are personally held liable in case the organization does not pay tax. What does this mean? This means that if you are a pastor and your church is not paying tax, at one time or the other, you may find yourself being prosecuted and you're going to be held personally liable for all the tax liabilities. And when that happens, you may lose all your properties. Step number four is to seek professional services. We know that tax compliance is complex. And many people find it very challenging to deal with tax issues. And what we advise church management and church owners is to seek the services of tax experts. Many complain that tax experts are very expensive. However, at the end of the day, they are very cheap because they're going to save you a lot of trouble and a lot of money. In actual fact, the money that you pay tax experts, that is the money that you are going to save in extra tax payments. Speaking with a tax professional, and especially those ones who specialize in non-profit or religious organizations, is advisable. In some circumstances, it's also advisable to have them on board so that you can consult them whenever you want. In most cases, they are going to help you with a personalized tax advice. They'll ensure that you are tax compliant, and they will also assist you to make prudent financial decisions. When you hire a tax expert, 
what you get is not only advice for the issue or board. You should take that opportunity to learn from them as much as possible and also to get help in other areas. Some of the tax professionals that you can consult are, for example, tax auditors, tax accountants, tax advisors, tax consultants, tax lawyers, and tax coaches. You don't have to go for the very expensive. You can start with those who are not expensive. And it does not mean that because they are not expensive, that the quality of the services is poor. No, that is not what it means. If the church does not have money to pay, you can also ask members of your church to help you. This is what I believe. Almost in every church, there are tax experts. So as a pastor, you don't have to struggle. Ask members of your church to volunteer and provide the services. That can be part of their time. We have said that a church is a public organization. So the pastor does not have to keep on struggling, trying to get some of the expertise from all over. There are very many members of the church who have the expertise. Those members of the church should provide those particular services without being paid. Step number five is to train and inform volunteers who work in the church about tax issues. We know churches have members of staff who are employed and they are also volunteers who work in church. To ensure tax compliance, providing tax training and information to the staff and the volunteers and the volunteers working in the church, especially in the accounts and tax departments, is very important. And some of the information that these people should have is about all tax obligations, any tax exemptions, special documentations that are required, and also updates to tax laws. As a member of the church management, please ensure that the staff plus the volunteers who are working in church have this kind of information. Because the law can be changed and if they don't have the necessary information, you are going to be in problems. As a member of the church management or the owner of the church, it is important for you also to have tax information. Go out of your way get the information you may not become an expert but what we want you to do is to learn about what is supposed to be done as far as tax is concerned once you do this you are going to be in a position to ask questions and you would be expecting answers and some of those answers you already have an idea on exactly what the answer should be rather than being in a situation where you know nothing about tax and therefore you cannot ask relevant questions. Step number six is to conduct regular internal audits. The year of income for any church is 12 months and after 12 months, the churches are expected to conduct external audits. Before the end of 12 months, it is important for the church to conduct internal audits. And this should not be a one-off activity. This should be done regularly. When a church does this, it is going to be in a position to know whether there is tax compliance. It is going to identify any potential issues or anomalies that are in the financial operations and very many other things that may come up. This internal audit should concentrate on review in detail of the internal controls, financial records, and tax compliance. Those are the three key issues that the internal audit should concentrate on. That is the internal controls, financial records, and tax compliance. Internal audits are going to help the church to assess its financial operations so that it can uphold honesty and integrity. Internal audit will tell you the direction you are headed as a church. Remember that when the finances in the church are in a mess, the church is headed in the long direction. The church is not going anywhere because the church relies on money that is contributed and money that it pays out so that it can grow. You have seen many churches that ignore 
the finance docket. And the finance docket is where tax falls. So as a pastor, don't just concentrate on preaching the word. No. Remember, you are the head of an organization. And that organization does not exist in a vacuum. No, it does not. It is very important to ensure that the finance department is operating properly. Step number seven is to stay up to date with tax law changes. The tax industry is very dynamic. It changes every single day. It is important for the church management and church owners to be aware of the current changes in the tax industry. Apart from changing, the tax rules and regulations evolve over time. It is important to watch out for any changes in the tax laws and especially during the national budget. But what we have seen of late is that changes are not only during the national budget. There are also other changes that are made during the year. It is important to know about those particular changes because those changes may affect the way you operate your business. And they don't only operate the way you do your business, but they are also going to change your tax compliance levels. To stay current with the development that may affect your tax compliance, there are things that you can do. Number one, you can become a member of a relevant professional association because in these professional organizations, members are always updated on the current changes that are taking place and especially in the tax industry. Number two, you can subscribe to a reputable tax publication and especially the tax publications that have relevant information as far as changes in the tax industry are concerned. Number three is you can attend seminars or workshops by professional associations. There are very many seminars and workshops, especially after the budget, to inform the members on the changes that are going to be expected. And when those changes take place, members again are informed on what has been changed. Number four is to attend tax conferences. There are very many tax conferences that you can attend so that you can learn things about tax. So that is all about uh, number seven. We have come to the end of the seven steps that any church should already have taken so as to improve their tax compliance. We have looked at the seven steps and the first step was to have proper tax records and documents. The second step was to separate church and personal finances. Step number three was to understand your tax obligations. Step number four was to seek professional services. Step number five was to train and inform staff and volunteers working in the church. Step number six was to conduct regular internal audits. Step number seven was to stay up to date with tax law changes. When you look at these seven steps, they are not difficult to implement. These are steps that you can implement and you can actually start implementing them from today. They are very easy steps to implement. And once you implement them, you are going to enjoy the benefits because you are going to improve your tax compliance from whatever level it is now to a higher level. When you get used to complying with tax laws, things become easy. For example, if you have not been filing your tax returns, the minute you start filing your tax returns, you will actually be longing for the next time to file your tax returns. It is important to comply with tax laws because when you don't comply with tax laws, it can be very expensive. There is one thing that you need to note that the information contained in this video is in no way legal or other professional advice. We invite you to read our content disclaimer in the description. For those who would prefer to read an article on how the church can improve tax compliance, seven steps, we have put the link in the description. And in case you think there is any other step that we have omitted, please tell us in the comments. And before you leave, make sure that you have subscribed and press the notification button 
so that every time when we upload, you are going to be notified. We have a lot of resources for our listeners and leaders on this YouTube channel and also in our website. We have provided the link to our website in the description. As always, your presenter today was Dr. Wakaguyu WK and till next time, stay well.